problem solving is at the heart of it. Um, things like technical skills, creativity and teamwork are very important. But there's more to it than that. It's the ability to bring together these skills, um, the lessons and the observations disguised as work experience um, to solve the problem at hand. There are in fact multiple correct answers. Uh, the challenge is always to go for the ones that have the least negative impact on the planet. One piece of advice I'd give is whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. A key skill in engineering is one's ability and willingness to learn. With new softwares and project challenges, you can easily find yourself in a dynamic industry that always promotes continuous learning. In my opinion, the most important skill that you need to have as an engineer is that you like to problem solve. As long as you have that, you can be anybody. You can be the person that sits behind a desk all day. You can be the person that's very hands-on or on site. You can be someone who's very client-oriented. You have so many options available to you in engineering, and you really should never feel like you're forced into fit into a box that you don't want to fit into. Engineering is about building infrastructure and services for society. In order to do that, we have to be first of all curious because we have to understand systems that are everywhere and that most people give for granted. Secondly, you have to be pragmatic. You have to be keen on understanding how this system works. You have to ask questions like, how does this system work like this? What can I do to make it better? Those are questions that an engineer faces every single day, but that are fundamental questions that are really important also for the climate crisis, where we have to rethink many engineering aspects of our society. What's unique or special about working at Borough Happold? Borough Happold is completely unique, as all its people are as well. Vera Happold is a place that truly does encourage you to be your best self, your true self, and the sky is the limit in respect of your imagination and what you can achieve. Working at Vera Happold allows me to be involved in the design of projects that defies limits of conventional engineering. Smart workflows and sustainability fall under our core values, which are reflected by the services that we offer. What's special and unique about working at Bureau Happold? It's the people. I get to work with a diverse group of people with different mindsets, different experiences, and different backgrounds. Our people are intelligent, collaborative, and very dedicated to what they do, not just from a work perspective, but also looking at how we as a firm can improve our communities and the world at large. I think working in Bureau Happold is special because of the people and the diversity. Absolutely, working in Vera Happel is amazing because of all the people who contribute to the work that we do. We do amazing projects for incredible clients who are really passionate, but actually it's our engineering teams and our business support teams that really make it a special and enjoyable place to work. As a non-engineer, how I see my role supporting the future of engineering is that I get to support the continuous learning of our engineers and our non-engineers. I think we're all always learning and growing, and this is especially true in the engineering industry. With rapid changes in technology, policy, and the skills that are needed to continue being successful into the future, there's always space for learning. As a non-engineer, how do you see your role supporting the future of engineering? I'm a lawyer and a specialist in the legal side of digital and construction tech. I'd hope that my knowledge of both the legal and the digital and the AEC industry enables me to speak both languages and help the engineers and the future of engineering to avoid the legal minefields so we can get all the benefit of the digital and the technology and the STEM developments that are available to us. My view is that the future of engineering is going to be all about new service delivery, using emerging technology and advancements in technology to do bigger, better, more efficient, more sustainable things. And I look forward to supporting our engineers in meeting those endeavours.
Engineering inspires me to be curious and be open to new and innovative ideas. When I was at school, I tended to prefer the technical subjects, so I studied maths and physics at A-level, but I also really liked being creative, art and um, design. So when I looked at university courses, I was sort of considering architecture and then realised that I could study architectural engineering, which kind of tied the technical and the creative together. Um, and so that was what, what I decided to do. So it's inspiring to be a problem solver in an era where society's biggest challenge is an existential crisis, the climate crisis. And in engineering, we're always looking at new ideas and critically rethinking how we have always done to propose better, greener solution. We have to change our systems and the time to do this is now with good engineering. What inspires me about engineering? As Isaac Asimov said, science can amuse and fascinate us all, but it's engineering that changes the world. And the engineers at Burrahapold with their passion and their ideas and their future thinking constantly inspire and encourage me to think what is possible. I was very heavily encouraged to get involved in STEM. Um, I went to a fee-paying all-girls school and I think that um, a lot of uh, people that I know that are engineers came from that kind of background and um, I think with International Women in Engineering Day um, we need to be aware of our privileges that we have had by, by being encouraged to get involved in STEM um, as a result of our education. Um, along with that, my both my parents uh, were doctors, so they were heavily involved in STEM as well. And um, yeah, they're the ones who actually told me that engineering was uh, a career option in the first place. So um, yeah, it was pretty much set in stone when I was about 14 that I was going to be an engineer. Were you encouraged to get involved in STEM? As a kid, I was a, a complete geek, complete coder, but it wasn't cool, it wasn't encouraged. I'm so glad things have changed now and you can see such diversity, but we still have more to do. As a non-engineer, what preconceptions did I have about working in the AEC industry? The preconceptions that I had were that it would be mostly male dominated. And I do think that was the case in the past, um, but I have been really encouraged to see our graduate cohorts coming in at about 50% women to men. Um, it's really exciting. I think we're starting to see some positive changes that I hope will continue exponentially. Since I started working for Bureau Hapold that I realized that engineers are not just wizardry mathematicians and scientists, they're artists, they're pioneers, they're inventors, and they care so much about what they do and the world that they create for all of us. In terms of the field, it's changed quite a bit over the years. I've been working in engineering for 20 years now. And when I started engineering, I was one of the very only ladies in the office. But now if you look around, you'll see that it's much more inclusive in terms of the people who are present, not only by gender, but depending on your location, also nationality, background, and abilities. So things have really opened up over the years, and um, I would definitely promote engineering as a course of study for anyone who's interested. It's very much a field to think about how do things work and how do you put them together so that they can work better? Absolutely, I've seen the industry change in the course of my career. It's almost, you know, incredibly different since when I, when I started 20 years ago. It's much more diverse and much more inclusive. I know people will tell us that we're not perfect as yet. We haven't got a complete balance in the statistics, but it is significantly different and significantly improved. It builds on the inclusivity that we have and our care for each other as people that make it possible. And we're jolly lucky, although it's not perfect, to be part of the Bureau Happel teams. It's also the focus that we bring 
to our looking at climate change. Vera Happold always talked about touching the earth lightly. And actually what we're doing in terms of our sustainability plan and our campaign to race to zero really is making a difference, both in the firm and the way we think, but also in drought. What has changed in the 30 years of my industry? Um, most obvious is, obvious is the number of women in the business. Um, the number of women who are now in leadership roles. And I think technology has changed um, and how we use it um, has very much changed. I think expectations are higher because we have more technology available and think that we can work faster and smarter. In some cases, that is true, but other times it's not. Um, it still takes the same amount of time to do calculations and to interpret them and make sure we're on the right track. I genuinely thought that when I went in to do engineering, I would be doing a lot of calculations, doing a lot of um, really highly technical things and actually something that I found is so much more time goes into kind of making sure that you have all the right inputs for your highly technical thing which involves a lot of assumptions, talking to people, like weighing up risk and things like that and then also a lot of um, engineering is about interpretation of those kind of models and calculations and so on and finding the right way to communicate what that means um, for your project and potentially what that means uh, to a client that might not be technical either. So um, I think to sum up, um, I didn't expect uh, the level of um, communication and soft skills um, uh, that I've had to use uh, being an engineer in practice. I didn't expect that that was going to form such a large part of my, my job.